drag racing fan, I'm the Monday Morning Racer. I'm here at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park in Phoenix, Arizona, and this is the NHRA Arizona Nationals in review up next. <laughs> Hello folks, I'm Lee Craft, the Monday Morning Racer, and this is In Review on the Arizona Nationals at Wild Horse Motorsports Park, brought to you by strutmasters.com and Hero Soap Company. Let's start with some fan tips. This is my first time ever at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park, and my experience was one that I was impressed, and yet I was also frustrated. So let's dive in to a few fan tips as you're coming up on the track and being in the Phoenix area. So let me clue you in. Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park is not just the drag racing facility in essence. You have the Motorsports Park, but Wild Horse Pass is really a entertainment area for the city of Phoenix from what I can tell in Chandler, Arizona. What do I mean by that? Well, beyond the drag strip, there's actually a road course connected with the drag strip. Beyond that, you've got an Esquine Center, there's a Native American Heritage Center for the reservation that the track actually resides on. Beyond that, there's casinos, there is a golf course, there is a place called Rawhide, which is like a western town that's bars and restaurants and a concert area for people to enjoy. So there's more than just the drag strip to enjoy at Wild Horse Pass. Around the vicinity of the Motorsports Park, you also have a lot of amenities concerning restaurants and lodging. So if you go down Interstate 10, you'll find exit 160, the exit beyond 160 as well. They have great food options and lodging options. Some that I recommend is Rudy's Barbecue. Rudy's Barbecue does have great barbecue, but I highly recommend stop in there for breakfast and get their breakfast tacos. They are amazing. Whataburger is around. Can't go wrong with Whataburger. I definitely enjoy the bacon cheeseburger from Whataburger. Also, if you're looking for Mexican cuisine, I highly recommend Ant Chalada's Tempe Mexican restaurant. Just Google that. You will enjoy it. I enjoyed it last night. You can sit outside and you're surrounded by desert foliage and you get this feel that you're in this old Spanish missionary while you're enjoying a Mexican meal. So definitely when you're at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park, around you you've got good food options, you've got good lodging options. Not to mention when you're coming up to the exit for the racetrack, when you get off, it's not a barren exit. There's actually a Love's Travel Center across the interstate over the bridge and you can stop in there, use the ATM, you can get some knickknacks and get prepared for your day at the racetrack. Getting to the track itself, I thought that was easy. They have it marked out clearly where you need to go. I don't think there was anything really to cause any confusion. Now parking is $10 every day. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's gonna cost you $10 to park. Now from where you park to where you get your tickets, it's a bit of a hike, it's not a bad walk, but there is no tram or trolley service here at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park. So thank you, Bruton Smith, for trams and trolleys at your events. Now, when you get to the gate, you know, since you've been to national events, you're gonna to have to have your bags checked, and they're gonna check those items, making sure you're not bringing any weapons or bringing anything to, to hurt anybody. I understand that, but there was a bit of frustration for me and others when it came to security at this national event. So I purchased my tickets, I go to the security checkpoint, I know they're gonna check my bags, no problem with that, I have them unzipped, I'm ready to go, but they noticed I had tripods, and they said, sir, we're not allowing tripods in this event. We're not also allowing professional cameras, anybody with long, zooming lenses, which I thought was strange. Out of all the national events that I've been to, I've never had an issue with bringing in my tripods. Another individual you'll hear from later, John, 
a amateur photographer that does really professional work. He takes time off and he goes to national events. He's just a super fan. He loves drag racing. He was told he couldn't bring his cameras in and somehow he worked it out. He did get some cameras in so he could take photos as he enjoys doing and then he posts to several Facebook groups for everyone else to enjoy. But what frustrates me the most is not people doing their job. Look, security's got a job to do. I want them to keep everybody secure. And the person on the ground, I'm not mad at. Who I am mad at, though, is the people who don't make these rules easily accessible to find. Look, I'm the type of guy, I'll go to a website and see what is or is not allowed. Well, whether it's NHRA or whether it's the website in particular for this event and this motorsports park, you cannot find it easily. In fact, I didn't find it before or even after. So, if anyone finds it, or if you happen to know where you can find it for other events, look, post it in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate that. But there was a bit of frustration there. Wait just one moment. Excuse me, Monday Morning Racer here. I forgot to mention something. Not only were they not allowing tripods, not only were they not allowing professional cameras or lenses, but they were not allowing snacks into the facility. They also were not allowing more than one bottle of water. I think that has to be mentioned. I forgot to mention it in filming at the track. I'm mentioning it here now because I've been going to the Southern Nationals for years with my dad when I was in diapers all the way to being a teenager with friends, now as an adult by myself sometimes. And every year it seems like we took a small cooler of soda and water and some snacks along and there was never a problem. Got in fine. They just need to check the bags. They're checking to make sure you have no weapons. I get that. But not allowing snacks? Not allowing more than one bottle of water? That is... That is absolutely ridiculous! It's asinine! You can go across the nation to other events and there's no problems with bringing some snacks in and bringing some water in. Bringing water in, bringing a few snacks in, isn't stopping me from getting a funnel cake at the track. It's the only place you can get it. It's carnival-like food. Absolutely ridiculous Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park that you can't bring water in, that you can't bring snacks in, that you can't bring your tripods and your cameras in. You ought to want people to bring their cameras in and give free promotion and show off what they got at the national event. Come on, NHRA. Come on, Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park. Ridiculous. Asinine. What are y'all thinking? Learn something from Atlanta. Learn something from Norwalk. Learn something from the other national events. All right. I've said my piece. Back to Monday Morning Racer at the track. Now tickets cost me for a three-day pass $111. That comes out to being about a $37 a day ticket that's not too bad for national events around the nation. Beyond that, I do think the facility is a nice facility. It's not modern by any standards, but it is nice. You've actually got the drag boat lake out here. You can go take some scenic views of that in, a, in the grandstands for the drag boat lake. They've got concessions spread out nicely, but there's even concessions where the nitro pits are. That's a nice addition for a national event. There are plenty of places for you to go around the track or over the track with the walking bridge or over the staging lanes for you to get to where you are going to sit for watching drag racing. So I like how it's laid out. The bathrooms, there's a lot of porta potties. That's fine. And you probably just want to go use one of them because there's not that many brick and mortar bathrooms, honestly. And when you go to them, they're fine. They're not modern, but they are okay for you to use and feel comfortable in. Nonetheless, there's not that many brick and mortar bathrooms. You see a porta potty, just go use it and save yourself some time for searching for anything else. Overall, my first time here at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park for a national event, I enjoyed it and I look forward to coming back. Hey, let's hear from John and what he does going to these national events taking photos.
Monday morning racer here in the Justin Ashley Top Fuel Pit, empowered by Strutmasters.com. Caught up with John Charbonneau, and he is a super fan here in the NHRA. You've probably seen his name and his photos, great photos, in some of the Facebook groups that deal with NHRA drag racing. John, man, so far, what have you thought about your first time to Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park? Well, it's a nice facility, uh, it's huge, and it's uh, a good place to come this time of year. I, I'm from the Boston area, so this warmer weather is a little bit better from what I'm used to. Definitely, definitely. Been some decent weather, rain yesterday, but it turned out to be a nice day. Uh, so, look man, you're a little bit older than I am. You've been doing this for a while. What was that first national event that got you hooked and you've become the fan that you are? Well, my first regular event was 1969 in Colchester, Connecticut. Uh, my first national event was 1974 at English Town, the Summer Nationals. Uh, and once I went to the Summer Nationals once, I was hooked. I, I went every year. There you go, there you go. Oh, e Town. E yeah. English Town had some great moments. And speaking of great moments, out of all the national events you've been to so far, what's what one moment sticks out in your mind? Boy, that's a tall order. Uh, Mark Oswald setting, uh, breaking uh, Don Garlitz, uh I think it was a five or seven year old record uh, down at English Town in 1982. He ran a 561 on a Friday night and the, the place went crazy. And that all right, was, that all was right. one of the ones I remember. All right, that sticks out. E Town and Mark Oswald. Hadn't heard that name in a while. Awesome. Yeah. Now, folks will know you for your photography, but that's not what you do for a living, in fact. What is it that you do week in and week out? Well, actually, I'm a highway superintendent for a little town in Fairhaven, Mass. Massachusetts. I've been there for 20 years. Prior to that, I worked for Raytheon for as a DASA radar engineer for uh, a good 12 years. So my retirement's coming in two more years. All right, two more years. That means more time to get the national events. Yeah. So you're going to all these national events. You've definitely got this passion and drive for going to all of them. Doing what I would consider really professional photography, even though many would say it's amateur photography, the photos are great. Where does it come from? Where does this drive to go to all these national events and get these photos? Well, my first national event, I drove up in the, the trunk of a Toyota to make it there because there wasn't enough room. And when I was a kid, I used 110 photography. And then I got my first 35 millimeter back in, I believe it was 1978. From then on, just the quality of the that, that got me hooked. Got you hooked. Kept, things kept looking better and better, and you kept getting better and better shots. And folks, I mean, I, I know you sold some shots to teams. They've got them from you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what you've got this weekend as well. John, look, thank you for your time on the Monday Morning Racer camera. Look forward to seeing you at many more national events. Okay, James, thanks. Thank you, man. Now for the MMR Pit Buzz. This is where I give you some updates on what happened at the particular event that I was at, this being the Arizona Nationals, what I heard going in and out of the pits covering the national event. My talking points, I hope they differ from the NHRAs, let them cover what they did, and hopefully I bring to you some tidbits about the event that you have not heard or that you haven't thought about. First off, Let's talk about the return of Steve, no, no, not Steve Torrance. We'll talk about that later. Rather, let's talk about the return of Doug Foley. Doug Foley returns after 10 years of not being in a top field dragster at a national event. They did have some challenges on Friday. In fact, they had to take an engine out, they put a new engine in, and they found that they didn't have a clutch. They had to do some work. They did get out for that last qualifying round on Friday made the show provisionally, but with Cameron Ferre not deciding to make a run on Saturday, they found themselves definitely in the show. But they went out on Saturday, ran the one qualifying run that was allotted because of the rain that came through on Saturday morning through afternoon, and they showed out for a team that hadn't been together that long. In fact, they went into the 380s and set themselves into the field for Sunday. Now, go rolling into Sunday. They did have a tall order in first round in Leah Pruitt. She's been running exceptionally well so far this year. They did lose in the first round, but I think they had a very good representative weekend 
for Foley Lewis Racing. Let's hear from Doug right now. Monday morning racer caught up again with Doug Foley. Doug, look, a lot of people are talking about Steve Torrance and Billy Torrance and this is their first show back. I think really the bigger story is that a man that hasn't been in a car for 10 years is back. So how did it feel to be back after 10 years at a national event and competing? It was it was everything I hoped it could be. I mean, of course, you can always look at competition and say, we could have done this or we could have done that. But overall, you know, 10 years not being in the seat, uh, you know, getting in one of these cars, it's an animal. It's just, uh, it's great to drive. The camaraderie with the guys, you know, putting a brand new team together in a four or five month period and having the camaraderie that we do. Uh, we shoot to be better every run, and it seems to be working for the most part. Um, and we're going in the right direction. Definitely. Y'all are definitely going in the right direction. You had some challenges Friday. Y'all worked those challenges out. Got a time posted and was in the show, but y'all definitely bested that time. What was that time y'all ran on Saturday night? Uh, we, went, uh, we went 387 on uh, Saturday night. Yep. And uh, the one prior was 415, which we knew was not, you know, the caliber of car this is. This is a. This is a. This is probably a high 70s to a mid 80s car, depending on the conditions and the situation. So that's where we expect to be. There you go. So making progress, getting to that point. You drew Mia Pruitt in the first round. That's a pretty hard draw and did not win the first round. But nonetheless, I think you had a good representative weekend. What's your thoughts on the weekend as a whole? Yeah, I thought so too. It was great to have my partner out here, Tim Lewis, who is going to come to maybe half the races or something like that. It was great. His son was here. So it was a real family experience, which my wife was here, but she'll be in Gainesville. But as far as the team, I think it gelled together well. It, it kind of showed us a lot of character about the team because, as you said, we really struggled Friday. You know, if you told me we were going to miss the first qualifying shot, I would have said no way. You know, so but nobody got excited, nobody got upset. We we, we dug in, we did what we had to do, and uh, that just shows the character that's on this team. And those you know those qualities will show later in the season. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you at Gainesville making all the qualifying runs. <laughs> That's right. But I do got to ask before we let you go, during the off-season, even though your off-season could be counted as a very long one, Correct. the most recent one, what was the funnest thing that Doug Foley did during the off-season? Wow. That's a good question because Doug Foley doesn't do a lot of fun things. Doug Foley works seven days a week. So, uh, you know, me and my wife took a little time off and went on a cruise uh, back in October. We had some fun. And uh, we look to do that stuff just to get away because, uh, you know, we're an unusual couple because we work together at a, at a, every day at work. We, you know, obviously live together. So we are together a lot. So uh, it's nice to be able to have time where you're not just always talking about business or racing or all of that. Doug Foley, man, thank you for your time. And we will see you at the next event in your strutmasters.com. Absolutely. We'll see you in Florida. One point you might not have heard about is Steve Graham. So Steve Graham in the Pro Stock ranks. He had some trials this weekend in Pro Stock. They had been running exceptionally well, making team bests over the last couple of national events. In fact, on Sundays, he had become somewhat of a giant killer. Back at the finals in 2019, he took out Alex Laughlin first round, treat him in the Winter Nationals. He took out Bo Butner first round to advance to the second round. So they came in to Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park, definitely thinking they're going to have a great weekend, but they struggled and struggled so much that they changed an engine, they couldn't get the car to hook. The track conditions were very challenging Saturday after the rain. In fact, after a couple of passes of Pro Stock, they decided to spray the track once again for the rest of the Pro Stock cars, seeing how badly out of shape some of the Pro Stock cars were getting. Sadly, Steve didn't make the show. I look forward to seeing Steve Graham, Steve Graham Motorsports, back out at another national event. I believe their next one is going to be Las Vegas. But speaking of Pro Stock, there were 19 cars entered in for this national event. For all the talk that there are no cars showing up for Pro Stock at national events, you had 20 show up for Pomona, you had 19 show up here for Phoenix, 
and out of that 19, you still had represented at least one Dodge Dart and Mustangs in the field. I think that's great news looking forward into 2020 for Pro Stock Racing in its 50th year. Let's swing back to Top Fuel once again. I want to talk about Justin Ashley and the Davis Motorsports Gang. They had another decent weekend for a young team, yes, with experienced guys, an experienced tuner in Aaron Brooks, but a rookie driver that I definitely think is going to be rookie of the year in Top Fuel. Justin Ashley comes out and they run in Saturday qualifying another new team best at a 370. All weekend he had lights that were 050, 040, and his first round win he had an 031 light in a nitro fuel car. That's impressive. And not to mention that 031 light came under a very high pressure situation. It looked like they might not make first round. That 370 blast on Saturday night, it threw the belt. And when it threw the belt, it also messed up some of the ignition wires. They had to rewire. Well, apparently it messed up a mag. I believe they replaced a mag and they had to warm up the car several times just to see if it would fire with having the mag issues and they did that right before round one. On what they had to go through and on his weekend, let's listen to Justin Ashley right now. Caught up with the man, Justin Ashley himself in this strutmasters.com top fueler. Justin, look, y'all had a good Pomona in the Winter Nationals. Y'all come here to the Arizona Nationals and it goes well. Y'all made some other marks for this team. Tell me your thoughts on qualifying and in the eliminations. Yeah, I thought we had an absolutely great weekend. Uh, coming from Pomona, uh, we had a lot of momentum having run a 372, our career best, and it was important for us to be able to carry that momentum forward and carry what we learned there and implement it to here in Arizona. And uh, personally, this is my first time racing in Arizona. I had a blast and the car ran fantastic. We qualified five, which is a personal best for us. We're able to go to quarterfinals and it's up to us to continue to grow and improve upon that. But this Strump Masters Top Field Dragster was looking really good all weekend long and I'm super proud to be a part of this team and I'm super proud of the guys. Yeah, Saturday qualifying, y'all only were able to make one run because of the rain, but y'all came out and showed out <laughs> with a new personal best there with a 370, but the belt was thrown, there was some ignition work done and I thought, oh man, that's never good and sure enough, some bugs came up right before first round of eliminations, but this team, this Davis Motorsports group, they thrashed, they got you out there, you stayed cool, and what was that like, Mr. Lumberjack? <laughs> it was an incredible experience this morning. We came in and everything was working good, and then all of a sudden when we went to warm up the car, we had an electrical gremlin that took us a while to get it figured out, but our guys stayed calm, they worked hard, they worked diligently and at a fast pace to figure out what was going on. We got it solved. We were still in the pit area at 10.58. The first round of elimination started at 11 o'clock. We towed up there. I got started to get strapped in here at the pit area. We were able to get the car started, do a burnout, back up, went at 371. I mean, it's just a testament to the group of guys that we have, that they were able to stay calm under that much pressure, and we were able to go out there and thrive in round one. Folks, they had an 031 light in a nitro car. Dude, you can hop in a pro stock and win with stuff like that. <laughs> All right, dude, look, we leave from here two, three weeks later on down the road. We are at the Gators, one of the crown jewel events of the NHRA drag racing. Look, what it would mean to win the Gators, man. The Gators are a huge event. That's where I personally got my first win in uh, the Top Alcohol Dragster. So I watched my dad race there for so many years. That's a personal favorite of mine. The Gators are what it's all about. It's a very prestigious race. It's one of those races on the circuit that you would love nothing more to win. And I can tell you this, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we put our best foot forward while we're there. And we're going to continue to work and continue to grind as a team. And I'm looking forward to it. It really doesn't get any better than this, being able to sit behind the wheel of a Top Field Dragster with the kind of team that we have and the kind of marketing partners that we have. A few weeks away, can't come quick enough. All right, Justin, thank you for your time. Folks, I want you to know he's going to be working hard in some house. Yes. And he's trying to flip Absolutely. wherever that is. Yeah. So don't think he goes and sits in the recliner. No, he works his tail off. And then 
He drives his tail off in this top field drag. So Justin, thank you for your time. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, just a few more items on this pit buzz. So I thought it was great that Jim Campbell and Dunn Racing got that first round win over Robert Height. He's got a pedal. Oh, Robert Height sideways, and Jim Campbell blows it up, and it's on fire through the lights. Blew the windshield out of the car. What a wild side-by-side -side contest. I think it also showed their professionalism as a team because they hurt that car. That motor blew. That body was seriously damaged. I saw it roll by as I was standing in the Justin Ashley pit. It needed a lot of work, but that team got that car back out there for round two. That team was needing a round one win desperately, and they got it here at the Arizona Nationals. Another point in the eliminations that you would have seen on the NHRA National Broadcast, but it was amazing to see from the stands, I happened to be in the stands that time, was seeing Brittany Force in eliminations rocket down the thousand feet here at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park and run a 364. That was impressive. I believe the mile per hour was 337 miles per hour. Man, Grubby has got that car going somewhere. That car's got some power. It's got the speed. Brittany's going to be tough to handle this year. She was right there in the fight for the championship. So, that car, looking good, can definitely put a number on the board. It was impressive to see from the stands. Lastly, I just want to say, I think the racing overall this weekend was pretty good. There were some pedal fests, uh, there were some red lights, there was some back and forth even. It was good racing out here this weekend for the Arizona Nationals. Monday morning racer caught up with Alexis here in the pits at the NHRA Arizona Nationals. Alexis, man, it is good to see you back Thank out you. in the Nitro pits. Where have you been? Oh man, I've been spending time with my family. Uh, traveling and uh, teaching my kid how to drive, um, riding my motorcycle, doing all that. So. Those type of things. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I know you've had fun at doing that. I know yes. you already are having fun already back in the pits, wheeling behind this great machine. Y'all have been running well. Tell me, how does it feel to have such a good start, really? Um, it's great to be back in the car. Uh, got a great team. They never stopped. I took off the last two years, uh, but, you know, it's like it's just getting back up on the bike again it's um it's been really nice and uh we got we got a good team good car you know just keep uh, scratching away at it and we'll get back to where we used to be you'll have that wally soon enough i'm sure <laughs> now speaking of bringing things back Y'all are doing the throttle whack yeah. here in the pits during warm-up. Bring back the wax. Bring so, back, excited. yes, bring them back. Yeah, yes, we're thank you about that. for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Fans love it. I love it. You know, I love you know, doing it. So that, awesome, yeah. awesome. That's good to hear. I know we know you know y'all don't have to do it no more, but thank you. Thank you. All right, so you've got ABK beer on the side of this car. Yes. How did you get a beer company in the, so, the professional day of drag racing on a car? Well, it, I mean, we used to have a tequila sponsorship, so it's not that far off. But um, so they are the oldest brewery in the world. They're from 1308, Bavaria. Really good beer. My favorite beer that they make is called Hell. Uh, they, um, my gosh, uh, I have about one, maybe one percent, one to five percent of the company. <laughs> so I'm my, my very small partner, um, but great people to work with. Uh, I mean, amazing beer. So obviously, we'll be we'll be celebrating with ABK beer in the winter circle. Well, definitely. Look, the red, black, and white with Rocket ABK beer works with you and yes. your motif very well. All right, Alexis. We know you've got at least one pass to make the day. Yes. I want you to get to that. So let me ask my last question. We're in the land of the Roadrunner and the Coyote, which is a far famous cartoon duo. <laughs> your favorite Looney Tunes cartoon character, which is it? Oh gosh, I haven't seen Looney Tunes in a long time. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Bugs, um, Tweety, Sylvester. I know, I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know, I kind of like the Roadrunner. Roadrunner's pretty good. Roadrunner, we'll we'll go with Roadrunner. Road road yeah. per perfect for a drag racer, the Coyote's never going to catch you. Yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully all the competition are Coyotes and you, Alexis, the Roadrunner, right you get on. a Wally this weekend. <laughs> Folks, you. that's Alexis on the Monday Morning Racer camera. Thank you. In conclusion, let's look at results and the current point standings. In top fuel, Steve Torrance, congratulations, he wins the Arizona Nationals. Funny car, Tommy Johnson Jr. bests 
a teammate in Fast Jack Beckman in a car that has had the hot hand here lately. He wins. Tommy Johnson does the Arizona Nationals. Pro Stock, Erica Enders finds victory lane early in 2020, whereas it took a while in 2019. Definitely that elite motorsports group has got some great hot rods. She's got one of the best, and she went to victory lane. Let's talk top fuel points. First, I want you to notice, fifth in points, Steve Torrance, though he missed the Winter Nationals, shows up here in Arizona and wins this national event, and it propels him to fifth in points. Also, I want you to notice, sixth, you've got the rookie, Justin Ashley. Look, folks, if you're going to be successful in NHRA drag racing, you've got to go past first round. And that Davis Motorsports gang with Justin Ashley driving, that strutmasters.com top fueler, they've been getting past round one. You've got to do that. He's sitting sixth in points. Now, the top three. The first two, no shock. You've got Doug Coletta leading. Second is Brittany Force. But look at third. In 2019, Leah Pruitt did not have that great of a year, but starting out, their 2020 looks pretty good. There they sit third in points in top fuel. I also want to make mention outside the top 10 right now, 12th in points, you've got Terry McMillan. They had a 369 run in qualifying. They showed some performance. I think they definitely have the performance. They showed that. If they can put it together regularly, Terry McMillan definitely will be a force for the top 10 out here in NHRA top fuel competition. Now to funny car points. So first place you've got Jack Beckman. They've been hot since the end of 2019. Almost won the championship in 2019. They come out, they win the Winter Nationals, and they're runner-up here at the Arizona Nationals. So fast Jack Beckman sits first in funny car points. The winner of the Arizona Nationals, Tommy Johnson Jr., a teammate to Fast Jack there in the Don Schumacher Racing Camp. He sits second in points, and third place is Mr. Funny Car himself, John Force. I also want to point out, in 10th place, you have Paul Lee, and Paul Lee sitting there in 10th place right now is beating out such names as J.R. Todd and Cruz Petragon for what is a countdown cutoff spot if you look at it that way. In Pro Stock Points, leading the way is Erica Enders. She also has one event win this year so far in 2020, right here at the Arizona Nationals. Second in points, another elite motorsports car. That's Jeg Coughlin. He won at the Winter Nationals, starting out right his farewell tour here in 2020. And sitting third, Jason Line from the KMB Racing Gang. Now, to point out, I want you to see fifth place you have Bo Butner. Bo Butner after losing round one at the Winter Nationals he comes out he makes a final round appearance here at the Arizona Nationals and he's propelled himself all the way to fifth place. We're going to hear from Bo in just a moment on his Arizona Nationals. It was a wild one folks. Also I want to point out outside of the top 10 in 13th spot is Greg Anderson in Pro Stock Points. Folks, thank you for watching this in review, the Arizona Nationals by the Monday Morning Racer, yours truly, Lee Kraft. Enjoy the rest of the footage that I've got tacked to this video, including the interview with Bo Butner coming up right now. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal. Monday Morning Racer here in the pits caught up with Bo Butner and he is your runner up here at the NHRA Arizona Nationals for Pro Stock. But Bo, <coughs> you being runner up, maybe you shouldn't have been runner up the way things went. Look, you had a crazy Sunday. Give us a rundown. Well, it was very, I mean, nobody wants to be runner up ever, but I was very happy to be, and I was very fortunate to be. I mean, here's my deal. I mean, uh, I believe in the Lord. And I promise you, he was with me every round of day. Now, I hope he didn't use up all of my luck in one weekend, but yeah, round one, I should've lost. Round two, I should've lost. Round three, we should've lost. So, making it round four, and make it a decent run, but we still have a lot of work to do. And, uh, but again, very fortunate to be here. 
give us some points and be in a better position for Gainesville. Definitely. Now, in this event, I believe it was round one, everybody was talking, the buzz down here was that y'all had to change an engine because you basically funny card one out there in a pro stock. So, can you give us some rundown of what happened? Yeah, just uh, maybe we had some uh, oil pressure issues yesterday that we, we tried to fix, but uh, we really never know. I mean, there are parts, so, but uh, no, with our strut master crew and the KB guys, I mean, they went to work, put us a new bullet in there. Uh, still a little bit off, but we didn't hurt anything. But yeah, it was the worst explosion I've seen in a pro stock car. So uh, very fortunate to get through that round and not tear up a lot of stuff. Yes. So before Gainesville, you got the Door Slammer Nationals. I know you'll be there in the factory stock car. You're going to have a grudge match in it. Yes. And also you'll be in the pro stock car. Is that correct? That's correct. And possibly they have a uh, top sportsman car class they're running. So I might hop in three cars if I have time. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be a good time, it's going to be a fun time, a whole different atmosphere. I mean, there's going to be money thrown around on the, on the starting line and my kind of old school days. Definitely, definitely. And then you did mention the next event after that, the Gator Nationals, one of the crown jewels of NHRA drag racing. Look, when you think of the Gators, what moment from the Gator Nationals comes to mind over its history? Well, I mean, it had to be mine last year because Randy Lynn and I both doubled up there. She won stock limb there, I won pro stock two different days so that's that's probably not happened before for a couple especially at the Gators but uh that was cool and I've been fortunate enough to win the Gators before in other classes but uh that's that's one of the big ones you have don't get me wrong you want to win every race you go to but uh, you have Pomona you have you have Gators and you have U.S. Nationals if you get those three wins and you pretty have a, you have your career is pretty full definitely definitely Bo look thank you for your time once again yes. and we look forward to seeing you at the Door Slammer Nationals and at the Gators and winning them all well again a great shout out to Strut Masters what a great team and, and I'm glad they came on board and I hope he's happy Chip the mission I'll see you at the Gators <laughs>